Hi everyone, this is Val from EurekaCrystalBeads.com with another sparkling beading video. But before I get started, here's a quick reminder to check out our channel. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified every time we have a new posting. Today's project is a sparkling fairy lilies. This is inspired from the Poppy Fields collection and I thought, well, poppies, I love poppies, but I also love these daggers, so I decided to make poppy fairy lilies. The products we're going to be using today from the collection, the Poppy Fields collection, is a three millimeter Swarovski bicones in an AB2X finish, some red, I believe it's a light Siam Swarovski in a six millimeter. There will also be four millimeter fire polish in this antique shimmer finish and I really this is the first time I'm using the fit, the shimmers and I really really like them a lot some black spinel in a uh, mic it's micro faceted it's really pretty it just kind of levels up everything that you add it to and some matte green seed beads 110 not in the collection are 110 black seed beads three millimeters frosty bicones some four millimeter fire polish in a light red and some daggers. And I believe this is a 16 millimeter. We'll also be using some wires, 28 gauge wire, some softlex in a 014 and some monofilament. Uh, you can either use a type of fishing line or a um, supple mats. Some basic tools we'll be using are a flat nose plier, a round nose plier, and a wire cutter. We will be using some crimp beads, um, a tiara cast toggle clasp, which I don't know what I did with the other side, <laughs> but this is what it looks like here, and some and a jump ring. I think the toggle clasp just disappeared on me, um, and. Last but not least, we'll be using some head pins in either a um, one inch or longer head pins and a piece of gold chain, um, probably about two and a half to three inches. And that's it, let's get started. So our first component we're gonna to create today for our necklace are these cute little nugget beads. So each bead is gonna take 12 individual beads and we're gonna use fishing line or supple max to string them together. So the, what makes it a little easier when you haven't worked with fishing line too much is to get a scrap piece of paper and a marker pen and just quickly just mark the some of the marker on top of the line just to give it a little bit of color just so you can see your line coming out of your beads just a little easier. And eventually as you're working with it, um, with your project, your the marker pen will come off from it. So don't worry about it sticking on there because we're just doing the tips. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna string up four of these beads. Start off with four, I'm just gonna move those over. So I have four. Okay, so with the opposite end line, we're gonna string into the last, cross back into the last bead added. So it looks like this, so crisscross and pull your lines apart. So pull your line tight. And at the same time, you wanna center that first little circle. So now we have a cute circle here. Now we're gonna string on one side of your line, two beads. And the other side, one bead. Okay. So now the line from this line is gonna cross into this last bead added. Take that line, cross this last bead added, and pull your line tight. So now you're going to have two circles on top of each other, just like this. Do the same thing one more time. So two beads on one end, one on the other end. Just like that and cross through the last bead added on the other side. Okay, pull your lines tight and now you will have three circles one on top of each other. 
one, two, three. So now to close off the ball, we're just going to fold, it naturally kind of curls up already, but now we're just going to fold it over and we want to add a bead to this one side and cross through this bead right here on the opposite side. So I got my string, my bead strung up, and I'm going to cross through this bead here. So same direction coming out from here and going to the bead across, directly across. I'm just going to pull this line nice and tight. One more bead on the opposite side. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to cross through the bead on the opposite end. So it's basically going to be the same bead you went through with the other line just to lock it all in place. Okay, so we pull tight. It forms into this cute little nugget. Now what we want to do, it's a little squishy, so we want to reinforce our ends with it. So we're going to sew back into these four beads on the top. I'm just going to go for that one more bead. There we go. And now we're going to go on the opposite side. We want to do the same thing. So see how these beads are kind of, and you can kind of tell because you'll see this, the, between the beads there is no string connecting them. And that's what kind of helps connect them is to sew this line right through them. All right, so here is our nugget. Now we want to try to tie a knot together with our lines together. So I'm just going to trail my line back to where the other line is. So they can be friends. All right, so my two lines are here. Now I just want to tie a regular knot. So just, just pull tight so that your knot becomes small. And just rule of thumb is you never want to cut your line right there, right where your end, right where your knot is. You always want to try to feed your line back through a few beads, at least two beads. If you want to go more, that would even be better, but you don't have to. Alright, so here we go. Our first little nugget is all set. Now what we want to do is just cut off all of our excess threads. Okay, so we want to have, uh, we're going to try to achieve two of these red balls in this antique shimmer and two in this bright light cyan. And we're also going to want to make four of these cute little sparkly Swarovski ones. Okay, I'm going to make those and I'll be back. Our next component are these sparkling fairy lilies made from the check daggers. And we'll be also using the black spinel and some 11L black seed beads to create a calyx, um, sort of a casing around the flower petals. So we're going to string up six of the check daggers. And we're going to be using fishing line or supplemax and about roughly 14 inches of a line to create each flower. Okay, so now we have all six strung. And now we want to center it, roughly center it in the middle of our line. And with the opposite line, sew back through all of the beads. All right, so I have all six beads strung and restrung around back into a loop. So it's creating a nice little half, kind of almost a half circle here. Now I'm going to tie my knot, my threads into a knot. Just kind of tie a nice tight knot. Okay. And then we want to kind of help our flower petals to be cut just a little bit. So here is the front. And here is the back. Okay. 
Okay, so now we want to start creating our calyx. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get one end of our, one end of our line and sew into one petal. So now when you're looking at your flower, you have this one petal with a line on each side of it. So on this side here of my petal, I'm going to string up one spinel, three seed beads, and one spinel for my first section. One, two, and three. And then one more spinel here. With the opposite line, you're going to sew down one spinel and one seed bead. And pull this tight. So you see right here, it created one first loop. Now the, the line that's closest to the dagger, we're going to sew into one more dagger, the petal. And do another section of now we're going to change it up a bit we're going to go two seed beads and one spinel okay let that drop down and with our other line we're going to cross through the spinel and the seed bead and pull down and pull tight All right so now the next again the next line closest to the petal will go into one petal and we're going to repeat what we did with with two seed beads and one spinel and then cross through that one spinel and seed bead with our fishing line okay so I'm going to continue this and when I am done with all around my petals I will be right back all right so I have finished going around all of my petals the seed beads and the spinels. And now I'm at my last petal. So here. So already I have a wall on each side, but I need to just connect them at the top. So on the, again, the line that's closest to the lower petal, or the line that's closest to the petal, I'm just gonna sew through the petal. And I wanna also sew up through this one spinel and one seed bead. One spinel and one seed bead. And I'm going to pull my line nice and tight. So now it looks like this. These two is where I'm coming up. And then I want to add one seed bead on one, on one line. And cross through with the other line into the seed bead. So it looks like this. And we're going to pull tight and it's going to end up right here over where we just worked at the walls. Okay, pull nice and tight. At this point, make sure you don't have any loose, loose gaps of the line. And now we want to strengthen this top part here of these beads, these little black beads. They're a little harder to see right here, but you can certainly see how they're kind of just kind of look like they're floating on the top. So I'm going to take my line and I'm going to sew through all of these little black beads here. So just so. Okay. All right, once you get to that end, so I have them all sewn up here. I just went across again the top beads here that looked like they were floating. Now my lines are together and I want to tie this into a knot, these lines into one knot. And make it nice and tight. So I have one and one more. Okay. And then I want to sew, um, I want to sew my lines back down through at least a couple of beads. Any beads will do as long as they're close by. Okay, 
Okay, here we go. And now we're just going to want to cut off our threads. So now our flower looks like this. So here's our back and our front. Now it's a cute little flower. So now I want to, you're going to want to repeat this, um, what we just did on another flower and it can either be the same amount of five or six petals, it's up to you. So here's a six petal and this is a five petal. And we're also going to do one with probably a three petal. So a three petal one here. So it's all done the same way. It's just you are only going to be working until you have the amount of petals you have. I have my three flowers already made. I have a six petal, a five petal, and a three petal flower. And I just want to show you, um, this is what it looks like from the top view and from the back view. You can see how the spinel really just adds like a little bit more of a texture here and it gives that little bit, a little bit more sparkle than just how the seed beads work. When I used to make these flowers um, a while back, I mostly just used seed beads, but once they came out with these little spinels or even just any of the microfaceted colors, I think it's super pretty. So I just started using them and I really like them. Just wanted to point that out. Then I also uh, will be using these little baby nuggets that I made earlier with a three millimeter Swarovski crystal. So I'm going to show you how to attach the findings to the flowers and um, attach them to the chain at the same time. So I'm going to start with my largest flower, the six petal, and I'm going to insert my head pin in through the center of that four, of one part of the nugget. I'm just going to place it in the center of my largest flower. And in the back, I want to put one of these shimmer beads from my, that I made from the nuggets previously. And then I'm just going to take my round nose plier and right about here, so maybe um, just about a quarter inch in, I'm just going to roll and reposition and roll. Just keep rolling just to make it nice and tight. And just push down that little excess part that's just sticking up. So you see it's kind of a little off-centered and that's actually what I really want to achieve. Now I'm going to start with my next flower. So I'm going to use the red shimmer on the top, go right through the petal. And on the back side, you see how it has that space just like the other one. I'm going to stick on the next. And I'm just using the light red fire polish here, but you could use both the red shimmer on both sides. It's up to you. So I'm just going to bend that over just a little bit there just to hold it together. And the last, the last one, I'm just going to take one of the three millimeter bicones on its own, slip it through, and because it's so tiny, I'm just going to use the three millimeter. And I want to insert it right in that center of the three petal. And make sure it comes right out the center. And pull that tight, as tight as can get. Okay, this one is a little bit long, so I'm just going to cut off about three-eighths of an inch of my pin. So basically now I have three-eighths of an inch or just a little bit left over. I'm just going to give this a quick bend with my tool, my flat nose plier, and just going to take the round nose plier and just roll away from you. Now I want to attach this to the last link of chain. So just make sure that eye loop is tight. Now this piece that I did earlier, I want to attach this flower Maybe about three fourths way up. Just kind of work it. That's perfect. Three fourths 
this way. Just slip it through the chain and close. And so this one I'm going to do the same thing I did to my large flower. I'm going to just roll my pin. You could do a wire wrap also with this if you have pins that are thin enough. But if not, if you have only the thicker pins, you can just roll this wire. And as long as you make it tight, it usually doesn't open. But of course, you want to just make sure it's really tight. So here is my first two pieces hanging off of the chain. Now we'll take our little nuggets and we're going to do the same thing to those. So the ball, the nugget ball, and one bicone at the end. And I'm just going to give this a little bend to the side, the pin bend. I'm going to cut off a little bit of it. And then I'm going to start to roll it. And before I continue to roll, I'm going to place it about almost halfway through between the two flowers. Slip that into the chain. Oops. And roll it. You can just close it too if you want, but it's up to you again. And you could also wire wrap these. Okay, so now that part's hanging. And now we're going to do one more right in between these parts here. I'm just looking for the tightest spot of my four. There we go. And add one more bicone. Again, we'll cut off a little bit and make a bend with the flat nose plier. And then we're going to roll it. And I want to place it right between at about the same amount of distance. My chain is about roughly two and a half inches long. And if you prefer silver over gold, I'm sure that will work also. I just particularly like gold myself, so I usually work with gold. All right, so I have my little flowers and my little nuggets on my chain. All right, so I'm ready to start stringing my necklace. I have my components on the chain that I did earlier, and I have a piece of Softlex wire in a 014, um, roughly about 24 to 30 inches, but you can make it longer or shorter if you want. I'm gonna slip it into the chain, roughly about a half an inch from the last component to where I want, where I want to put in my Softlex. And you notice I have this little end here hanging. I might want to use that for something else. So I always include a little extra just in case. You may cut it off, you might add something. And now I'm going to add the largest flower, which is a six petal flower, directly onto the soft legs. So now we can start stringing our beads. Now I always want to include something that I use from the pendant into my strand because sometimes it just kind of adds to it and it helps to give it that texture and a more cohesive look. So I'm going to start off with one of these fire polish beads, three black spinels. And I'm going to use probably three black spinels in between most of my beads, my larger beads, just because I think it kind of caps it quite nicely. And the spinel is so pretty and faceted that it will give it an extra sparkle. So, okay, I have my three spinels. I'm going to add in one six millimeter fire polish. And then three spinels again. Oops. Okay, 
everything just like this and one green seed bead now this matte green seed bead is just using a very ever so slightly um, to add a little bit of color to the necklace and then we're going to start with our with one more shimmer a nugget bead and you can just string the nugget bead directly on just like this however there is this empty space between them and so I want to add some crystal bicones in there just to kind of um, fill up that empty spot there so I'm going to add in two three millimeter bicones and then my nugget and I just want to push that bicone's just right in there just you hear it kind of pop in there and it would just string down with it so now as you're looking at it you won't see the empty spot but you will see some red color into there just kind of a little trick Okay, one more of this bead, the green, a matte green, and three spinels. And then a bicone, six millimeter bicone, and three spinels. and one of the green. You see how it's starting to take shape. So now I wanna add my next color nugget in there, which is gonna be the light red. So I'm gonna do, I'm going to do the same thing where I am gonna add in my four millimeter light red fire polish, two three millimeter Swarovski bicones, and the nugget bead. String that up, and of course, again, you want to pop in. Oh, they already kind of went in. Just put those in there. To cut to, we're putting the three millimeter bicones in there just to kind of give the inner core like it has something in there. It doesn't look empty. And another fire polish. And then a green. And then we're gonna we're gonna go with the three spinels again. One two three okay so from here I am going to do repeat a mirror if a mirrored design from across to here and then I'm going to continue just stringing up randomly the top of my my necklace to however it comes out and I'll be back when that's done and show you how to finish it up all right so I'm back I have strung up all of the components for the necklace I have the pendant the little nugget beads and then I strung up all of the little components that I wanted to add for color and texture and finishing off with just the black spinel and I want to show you just a quick tip and trick you may already know this but um, just in case you don't know the spinel and some other beads sometimes have a larger holes and so a kind of an easy way to string up a bunch instead of stringing them up all individual is to kind of gather them together and hold firmly with your pointer finger and your thumb and pull it off the thread in one motion. While still holding it, you're going to take your soft flex wire and string right through all of those beads. Oh, that one got naughty. Let's see string through the beads voila and it's there okay so that was easier right than stringing one bead at a time so now I'm going to show you how to finish off this necklace so I'm just going to use a crimp bead and a toggle so I'm going to say that this now is my front is facing forward already so I'm going to string in my toggle so the bar in on one side and just go over the bar and right back into the crimp bead and you could try to get through the spinel one more time I actually should have thought about it to see if it goes through 
Yep, it actually does. So you want to go through at least a few beads just to make sure that the end of your bead is not, um, end of your wire is not just sticking out and poking. So I'm just going to pull it down, make that tight. And you could either use, um, I'm going to use a flat nose plier here, but if you're more comfortable using your um, crimp tool, you can certainly use that as well. Just cut off that excess there. And to the other side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to string up our crimp bead and the other side of our toggle. These are the TerraCast toggles, and there's so many different designs that we sell on our website that you can choose whichever type you want. And just go back through again, at least a couple to three beads, and pull that down tight. Now, before we crimp, we want to make sure that we don't have a lot of loose ends running around, um, any beads that are not, well, I want to make sure everything's nice and tight. And just give your tool a little smash there again, and then cut off your excess. So basically we are actually done right here. I wanted to, as I was making this, I had a bright idea that came to my mind at the end. So I'm going to show you how to make a little, um, a little poppy flower pod. I'm going to make these cute little leaf ends with wire. I'm going to take a piece of 28 gauge wire and I'm going to string up three of these green seed beads. I just love these green seed beads so much that I wanted to use them a little bit more. So string up three and bend the long piece of wire over just a little bit. So you have a short end and now this long end. And I'm just gonna take this wire and give it a little twist. So maybe about three or four twists. Right there, you see right here, a little twisting of wire. All right, so then I'm just gonna string up a bunch of these little beads, maybe about nine or 10 of them. And with this length of beads, I'm just going to roughly and quickly wrap it around the three first beads that we started with. Two, three, bring it in. So just string up your beads, wrap it around, bring your ends of your wire close together. And if you feel like you need another bead, add another bead. If not, you can take some out, but it should look roughly about like this. And now you're going to take this wires and you're going to quickly twist a couple times and just go all the way down once you know it's nice. So just have a nice twisting of beads. And you want to achieve maybe about, um, you know, a good maybe inch and a half of twisting a wire. It's always better to have more than not enough, that's what I always say. And you can cut off that end parts there uh, that are loose. And then I'm going to show you how to um, join a little nugget to that to make it look like um, to make it look like it is a pod or a little bud. So we're going to take another piece of 28 gauge wire. This time, maybe about um, maybe about 10 inches is probably more than enough. But I like to have more than enough. It feels it feels a little bit safer, a little bit more makes me more confident. Um, I'm going to string up one three millimeter bicone. And then you're going to fold your wire in half. So center your bicone on your wire. And this will sew right through your little nugget here. And I'll, again, look for the smallest square that you can find or the smallest circle of four bicones. And then you're just going to pull it tight here, like just like this. And you could actually put one seed bead on one of the wire. 
can just string it down right on top of the nugget. It just kind of helps to um, have something to grab onto for your net, for your wire as I'm going to twist. So I have here, just to show you again, I have the bicone, I have my nugget, and my C bead, just on one wire as a C bead. So now I'm going to take this and twist this a few times. So I'm letting my left hand do most of the twisting, and my right hand every once in a while will kind of help it out. So it makes the more you twist, it gives it a nicer, tighter twisting. Okay, so I'm going to take one each of my sides of my little pod leaves or my bud leaves right on the side. And just kind of bring it together as close and as tightly as you can. Just like this. And I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to take all three pieces together and twist them all together. Okay, so now here is my bud with the little flat with the little leaves on the side or the little this little calyx. And then this is kind of a very whimsical and fun design. You really don't have to worry about being too perfect because it's just kind of a fairy garden. So in a fairy garden, everything is just happy and pretty and sparkly. Okay, so I want to attach it to my necklace someplace. So maybe I will put it right here in this area of this long chain that little short piece that I did earlier just that little spot right there but my wire is a little bit thick for this so I think I'm going to close it off and attach it with um, a jump ring maybe so I'm just going to lock that in and quickly wire wrap this piece so cut off the tail end oops <laughs> of course my sea bees are trying to run away they want to escape tuck in that little end and I'm going to take a moment and look for a jump ring, and I'll be right back. All right, so I decided just a little bit ago that I wanted to show you how to make a little leaf. Because I think that adding a little leaf to the bottom would be really cute just to add that touch of greenery to kind of blend in our little pod here with it. So I'm going to show you how to make it. We're going to start off with a piece of 28 gauge wire, um, roughly about maybe 6 inches long. We're going to pick 7 beads up and add it to our wire. Leaving a little bit of a tail, we're going to form a bend over our leaves here. So our leaves, our beads are side by side with one little with one little bead at the top, kind of forming a tip of our flower. Now we're going to take this together and we're going to twist the wire about three times. Okay, so you see that little twist? All right, now we're gonna pick up seven more beads to make our next petal, I mean our next leaf. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Those little green beads love to run away from me. All right, so let's see, we're gonna do, bend that over again and make sure we have the one bead at the tip and twist those together now. So since we've done the two, we want to join our our wires together and twisting. So here you go. So here is our next section of leaf. We're going to do one more. So just separate your wire again and string up seven more beads. dropped a couple so now I have to add a couple so four six one more make seven does that happen to you too do you lose beads as you're kind of trying to string them yeah, maybe it's only me 
Okay, so I have my seven beads and bend again one last time and we're going to twist. So make sure again our beads at the top and then twist together. And then we can kind of just push, push it down just by, I had it up here, but I felt maybe I can just bend it down a little bit. It's really free form, so you really can do whatever. I think you mentally, your, your mind and your hands just kind of start doing whatever happens, it happens. I think that's kind of a cool thing. So just keep twisting till you have a nice tight twist like that. Take your round nose plier and we're going to make a loop to get ready to do a wire wrap. So I'm going to attach it to this bottom here on this bottom link here of the, the smallest flower that we made, the three petal flower. And we're going to just wrap the wire around your, around your leaf wire here just to lock it in. right here and now we want to cut off our excess wire all right okay so now we're going to want to attach our little pod so I'm gonna take my jump ring and remember that little piece of chain we had sticking out earlier that we did not use? It was the excess from our chain that we attached to our fire line, um, to, not to our fire line, to our soft legs. We're gonna attach our jump ring to that last link. We're gonna, we will now attach our pod. And take your secondary tool and just close your jump ring together, make it nice and tight. You could use a smaller jump ring if you want as well, or a larger, it's up to you. Okay, so once that's nice and tight, I can take away all of my tools and my beads like push. And here you go. So here is our finished design. So remember what it looked like earlier without the greenery, the little greenery and the little pod. But I think it kind of adds to it. It kind of gives it a little bit fresh, um, a fresh look, um, kind of a cute whimsical design also. Fit for fairies. All right, so everything is um, available on EurekaCrystalBeads.com and um, part of these supplies came from the Poppy Collection really love that poppy collection. I think it's so cute with all of this red texture and sparkle. Um, yeah, so see what you can make with it. Thanks for watching and you can find these supplies and more on EurekaCrystalBeads.com.